The name of this blog is uh, You Can Come to Jesus in Darkness Also. You can come to Jesus in darkness also. Alright, we want to start with 1 Thessalonians 5.16. But before you turn there, let me, let, me quote, let me quote something from there and you see if you can finish out the rest of the verse. Rejoice evermore. Okay. No, uh, no answers because you're muted. Well, actually, that, that is 1 Thessalonians 5.16. That's all there is to the verse. Rejoice evermore. All right. Well, it hit me the other day. I was looking through my Bible and I looked down and I saw it and it said rejoice evermore. And I thought, even, even if you've done something wrong or you've messed up or you're still supposed to rejoice because it's evermore. And the Spirit of God just said, yeah, you know, he hadn't changed. You can rejoice in him. You can love him. You can, you can always open your throat and your heart to him regardless. And I kind of want to run along that theme uh, on this, this sharing. And that is that you can come to Jesus anytime. You can always come to Jesus. And a lot of people, they, when they sin or fail or something, don't, you know, they don't feel like they can come to Him. But they can. And we'll get into why that's true uh, and the importance of that. To, to really look at that, I want to, the main verses I want to look at is Luke 23. And um, <clears throat> this deals with the two thieves on the cross with Jesus. And I'm coming from a little different angle than maybe you've heard me share on this point. But it's, it's uh, important to our hearts and to His heart that we remain one. Um, so, Luke 23, verses 33 through 37. Uh, here's the basic theme of what it is, and you know this anyway. So, verse 33 begins with, And they crucified Jesus, and, um, he, uh, and so the people began to mock him. And they begin to wag their heads, and they begin to say, you know, so if you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. And they begin to say all of this stuff. And um, the, the high priest also did that, and the Pharisees, and all the people that were uh, passing by. And the, the, the important thing about that is not so much um, uh, anything that was written there as much as the thing that I'm going to mention later on is that while Jesus is hanging on the cross, while Jesus is there, nobody sees who He is. They see Him between two criminals, and they assume He's a criminal. And so, and then verse um, uh, 39 And one of the malefactors, and this is the part that I really wanted to share with you. And one of the malefactors who were uh, nailed up with him said, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us also. But the other answering uh, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the, the um, due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And then the next verse is, And it was about the sixth hour that this was happening. It was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the next verse, and the sun was darkened. And, and so you have this um, situation where Jesus. Jesus is hanging on the cross, and you have these two men on either side. And one of them is mocking, or he's going along with the crowd, and he's doing all this stuff. But the other one is uh, 
responding, but here's what I don't think I've seen that clearly. He is hanging on the cross for his own failures. He is, it's, he's in darkness. They're all in darkness during this time. He has, um, who knows if the, this thief's mother is there or family is there or friends, but he's in the worst possible situation that he could be in. And, and so why is this so unusual Well, that he would reach out to Jesus in the particular way that he did? And the answer, I mean, it's, it's why would we fear to come to him? When we're in deep failure, well, we all know, you know, we all know the things that keep us, the things that would hold us back. And when we're surrounded by darkness and failure within our own being or in our own situation, it seems, you know, almost reasonable not to come to Jesus, to stay away. Um, but this thief came in the hour of his darkness. And in the moments of probably the greatest doubts he've had about his whole life and what what he did and the decisions that he made and and uh, and he and he turned and he spoke to Jesus in a completely different manner than normally that you know because usually fears would be really high at that point. Jesus said, and remember, we're talking about coming unto Him, that you can come to Him. In darkness also. Jesus said, Suffer the little children, allow the little children to come unto me. And I was thinking about that. And But if you're coming as a child, if you come to Jesus as a child, there's a difference between coming when you're in deep darkness and failure. They're really two different things. When you come as a child, it's like you're, you're empty. And he's going to give you knowledge, or he's going to fill you, or whatever. Um, but coming in darkness, and failure, and confusion is worse than being empty. It's worse than coming as a little child. And it's not easy. It's not easy when every motive says, stay away from the Lord. You know, I think my opinion, I think that probably all of us have experienced that in relationship to maybe going to church, you know. One morning you wake up and you just just don't, you know, you just don't feel right spiritually and you think, and I don't need to, you know, last place I need to be is church. No, that's the first place. But greater than that, we're talking about the Lord, not just going to church. We're talking about meeting with the Lord. We're talking about coming unto him, and um, this thief turned to Jesus. Now, now, I wish I could, I wish I could just have a screen and paint that picture for you. That um, there is no reason why he should look to Jesus in the manner that he did. There's no reason why he should. He should have been caught up in his own situation, in his own hurts, in his own, in the things that have been unfair that put him there, even if they weren't. You know, you know how we are. This is, you know, this is unfair, and we blame everybody. And you, we get all in this flux and in this muck and mire in our mind, and especially in our emotions and stuff like that. Um, but. This thief didn't do that, um, and he didn't. When he turned to Jesus, here's the here was the, another thing that hit me. When he turned to Jesus, he didn't just turn to repent or to you know feel sorry for his actions. See, that's that would be us. I'm I'm going to come to Jesus in my darkness. You understand? Are you following the, what I'm saying here? We're talking about coming to Jesus in our darkness. I'm going to come to Jesus in my darkness and in my fears and everything, and I'm going to repent. And I'm going to feel sorry for my actions because this is what you do when you come to Jesus in your darkness instead of rejoicing evermore. Or, 
But he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm coming to honor Jesus in his death. To honor Jesus in his death. And that's exactly what he's doing. And to see past the outward. Because the outward is, there's a guy that looks like a thief just like you do. And, and you're just going to be stuck in that place if you don't look past the outward and see who's really there. And you see, that's, that's the thing that caught me. Or one of the things that really caught me was that somehow he quit looking at himself. Somehow he quit thinking about himself. Somehow he's not going, this is my last minute it's on earth. Somehow he's looking at Jesus and saying to this guy over here, leave him alone. We deserve this. But he has done nothing wrong. Oh my God, he's... He's knowing Christ crucified. He's not talking about Jesus of Nazareth who has just healed him or his family or fed them, you know, this or that or whatever. He's not, he's not coming on that approach at all. He's talking to Christ crucified. He's talking about, he's going, this is the Jesus I know. Maybe he never was at, at any of the events where Jesus was at. And he's saying, this is the one that I see. This is who I know. And so anyway, when we get in this darkness, we can have a confidence. We can have a confidence that overrides all of those fears. But our confidence comes from knowing his, his view of us. Not us, but his view of us. His view of us. Let's see. How would he see us if we come to him in darkness? For you're dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. You are in Christ. He would say, you're in me. And see, we, we say to one another, you're accepted in the Beloved. But this, if we come to him in darkness, he would say to you, you're accepted in me. I'm beloved of the Father, and I put you in me. You're me. Not in Christ. Me. He would say, this is what I believe, and it's not just a belief. I put you in me. And even if you don't feel beloved, that's okay because I'm the beloved, and you're in me. And whatever your reactions about yourself, or your mind, or your thoughts, or your the crazy things that go on in you, I'm still talking as if it's Jesus. What, all the crazy things that go on in you, this is my mind, and if you take my mind, then you can have confidence even in darkness and can rejoice evermore. Evermore. Alright, so... I was just seeing Jesus' response, you know, and uh, this day you shall be with me in paradise. And I just thought, this, this thief of all people, <laughs> this thief has found a back door to communion with Jesus. He came in through the darkness. Everyone else would meet him in the light. He came in through the worst of his situation that he could possibly be. They all, when they were doing good. And he... Found the straight, and he found the straight shot. He found nobody else came immediately to be with Jesus, except this guy, this criminal, this this guy that found Jesus to be the Christ of the cross, and not just the Christ of the healer or miracles or things like that. So. Um, that, that fact was part of what grabbed me, that he embraced the crucified Christ. He did. He's right there, and he's embracing the crucified Christ. I wrote down a, a statement here, talking about Jesus 
talking about this reprobate, this thief, this criminal, and what happened with him. Jesus makes this kind of believer an open display of faith in the midst of darkness and their own failure. So here he is to Jesus. This thief is sh shining forth faith in Christ crucified in the midst of his own darkness, in the worst day of his life. He is shining forth Christ crucified and faith in Christ crucified and he's in the open display of this guy the open display is he's on a cross <laughs> okay see we want to be behind the pulpit or we want to be a great missionary we want to do this <laughs> and this guy that's what I said he found the back door into communion with Jesus it's just it's just amazing <laughs> All right, so we, uh, I was quoting the beginning scriptures there where, you know, all these people, many, a whole lot of people had already passed by Jesus and they're wagging their heads at him, at Jesus on the cross and saying, you know, we thought you'd be the one or you would, you know, but you're, you know, if you're the son of God, then come down. Now they're mocking him and and they're wagging their heads at the great fall of the one they had such high hopes for. Because it's easy, it's easy to turn on somebody. And Jesus seems, I don't know, you be the judge of this statement, you don't have to agree with it. He seems to be really a only fully aware of this thief and the Father. See? When he, when he had a thought of the people, he said, Father, forgive them. When he did take thought of the people, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. Now, that's a completely different kind of deal here. And then, Father, into your hands come in my spirit. And then one other personal interaction. He's hanging out with a thief. Really hanging out on a cross. He's hanging out and he's and and, and miracles are happening, but not the kind that everybody's looking for. A miracle. Jesus said, that's a miracle that you in this darkness and confusion and pain have taken note of me and identified me as who I really am, Christ crucified. And the, the, the thief says, so this is a miracle, it's a day of miracles. Here I am in darkness and confusion and in pain and the worst day of my life when I will give up the ghost. As soon as I do, I will be with Jesus in paradise because I embraced him as Christ crucified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rejoice. Rejoice evermore. All the time. That's your worst. That's your best. Any time. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for opportunities to live past our cross and glory in your cross. To ignore our darkness and our lack and our confusion and to hear your beautiful healing words this day. You're with me this day. Father, may we become less mindful. You said set our affections on things above where Christ sits. Well, that, that'd be Jesus because he's the one who sits there. Not on things on the earth. 
help us to be more mindful of your reality, having your mind and your view, so that our darkness, when we, when we come like this thief did, he came to you in the worst, that darkness was over as soon as he acknowledged Christ crucified. And Jesus said, it's over with, you're with me from now on. Help us not to be so mindful. In fact, the scriptures say, don't set our affection. Don't look at it. While we look not at the things which are temporal, but the things which are eternal. And those things are not doctrines, and they're not teachings. They are you, Jesus. You, Christ crucified. You, the realness of who you are. And you did it all in yourself so that we would be safe and could rejoice evermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being our life. Thank you for joining us to you. In your name.